Hello Lewisburg, I'm Deirdre and I'm going to show you how to make a St. Bridget's Cross. So I hope everybody is well and you may have learned how to make these while you're in school or you may still make them, but you might just want to refresh your course. And all you need is some rushes, they're growing all throughout Lewisburg, I picked some from the garden today. You need some twine and a scissors. Now it's probably handy to cut up your piece of twine first, um, they're cut up to about 20 centimetres. So you can tie your cross together when it's all made up. So I'm going to start making the cross and to start with you'll want a rush that's fairly strong and steady. So uh, this one looks kind of nice and strong and try and get some nice long strands of rushes. So you start off with your first rush holding that upright and then you take your second rush and you fold it in two and you pinch it and you place it across the rush like that and then pinch it again when you place it across the rush. So you've now got one rush horizontally and this one doubled over across this way. So you then need to turn it around. So you've got the two strands pointing upwards and you take another rush and bend it over and pinch it and again place it across. Now when I make my cross I'm right-handed so I'm always going from right to left with the rushes. If you're left-handed you might want to go in the opposite way but you always need to turn the cross in the same direction to make your cross. So now we're getting towards the first cross shape and we keep folding our brushes and pinching them and putting them across like so. So you're now starting to weave a St. Bridget's cross. So you continue this process and while we're doing this I'll tell you a little bit about St. Bridget. Um, she's of course associated with um, the 1st of February and traditionally people make these St. Bridget's crosses on the eve of St. Bridget's Day. In folklore, the eve of uh, the celebration day is generally more important than the actual day. That's when um, a lot of the festivities will happen. So it was traditional, uh, St. Bridget is the patron saint of um, agriculture. So uh, many farmers would make these St. Bridget's crosses and they would hang them up in their homes or in their uh, barns or their byres and they believed that St. Bridget would come uh, travel across the country on the eve of her, of her day and uh, she would bless the cattle and the livestock and she'd also bless the homes. So while I'm doing this I'm continuing to fold my rushes and weave them across like this and continuing to turn the cross. So St. Bridget is thought to be um, a pagan deity and uh, she, when she was born she was born to a slave mother but um, she was very generous and she gave away a lot of milk and butter and uh, when her goodness was seen she was freed from being a slave and it is said that she set up a monastery in Kildare. Now one day when she was out there's a lovely legend um, that a lot of people would have learned in schools as well. There's a lovely legend that um, she came across the King of Leinster and she asked the King for land so she could build a monastery. And the king kind of sneeringly said to her, yes, yeah, so much land do you need? And she said, well, as much land as my cloak can cover. So he thought about this, but didn't thought, think about it for too long because he thought it sounded like a very good deal. So he agreed to this and um, St. Bridget spread out her cloak. And of course, the cloak covered many, many acres of the land that we now call the Curra in County Kildare. Of course, she had these magical powers and her cloak spread for miles and miles. So the king couldn't go back on his word, so he had to grant Bridget the lands and she built a monastery there. And um, they made a wonderful book there, which would have been similar to the Book of Kells, but now sadly no longer exists. And uh, she was a teacher. She's also the patron saint of scholars. So you can continue with this cross for as many rushes as you like. But I think we've done enough now for today. We've got a nice square here in the middle or a lozenge. And um, this lozenge is, lozenge is traditionally a sign of fertility and you can see it on ancient statues going back to Mesolithic times, back to 6,000 years ago. So now we're going to tie up the ends of the cross. So this can be a little bit tricky and this is why I always like to tie, sorry, cut the pieces of string before you tie up the cross because it can tend to fall apart on you. But you want to tie it up really tightly so get a nice knot in it. And when you're finished this, 
you're going to cut off the ends of the cross so it's nice and even like this one I prepared here yesterday. Here's one I prepared earlier. So as I said, I hope everybody in Lewisburg as well. I'm totally blown away by the community here. Um, I moved here just two years ago and I'm part of Lewisburg Voices with Des Grealis. Des, thanks a million for setting this up. It's an absolutely wonderful asset for the community. And uh, thanks to Mary O'Malley as well from Tia who asked me if I would become involved um, to make this little video for you here this evening. So we're nearly finished the cross. I've just got two more arms with to tie up. So there's some wonderful videos on uh, the Slowsburg Community TV. I hope everybody is uh, keeping in touch with it. And um, I'm going to be posting another video on the site as well. All about the heritage of Ireland, which I really love, and folklore. So now we've got our four pieces of the cross tied together. And you want to try and make sure that your arms are all kind of the same length. And then we're going to cut off the ends, like so. And there you have your lovely St. Bridget's Day cross and you would hang this up over your doorway or in your barn and St. Bridget will come along and bless it for you. Thanks very much. I hope you've enjoyed how to make the St. Bridget's cross.